Hello and welcome back to another episode of Farming Life at the Forge. On today's episode you will get to see our pups. So our pups are now five weeks old and they are heading out out to grass for the first time and have a little play around and to get them out of the box. After that, later on today, Dad is going fencing so he'll bring you along with him and show you a bit of what he's at. And then tomorrow, Mum and Dad are heading off to get the bale trailer. So if you remembered when we got these kid goats, the place we got them off um, was selling a bale trailer. So it's a trailer that will go along and pick up small square bales. And so they bought it and now they're going along to pick that up in the Hilux and they will bring you and show you that as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe below if you want to see more episodes like this. So here are our pups. They have gotten so big. They're now five weeks old. They're already climbing out of the bed. Or at least this one is. So this afternoon I have to feed them now before they eat me. And yeah, you wanna eat me? Uh, no, not the face. And today is the first day we're going to be letting them out onto grass. Um, so they're now big enough. And it's just gonna be a question of watching them. Hopefully they don't run off. You can hear Paco behind me. He is always barking at them when they start squeaking. And they're just too cute, but unfortunately we cannot keep them because 11 dogs would be near impossible. Oh, no, you're not getting out again. I mean, just look at them little faces. Oh. So we have three boys and four girls. Two are already sold. So no. Yeah, I'll feed you now. Okay, they're all jumping out. But to feed them, we have our cookie nuts. They are noisy when they're hungry. Second batch of milk powder. So there's puppy milk powder that we're feeding them. Warm water. They have just finished eating that to get them to grass they won't follow me just yet because they've never been there and they'll probably be a little bit scared at the beginning being their first time out of the tub for when they break free so i'm going to try and get them into this box and hopefully they'll stay in it long enough for me to be able to bring them to grass get out Come on. Whew. They're heavier than I was expecting. So here they are. How am I ever going to sell you? Look at them all chasing around Prue. I think they're enjoying the grass. 
there's nothing nicer than seeing them all out in the grass finally rather than being in the same old tub the whole time. <laughs> they're already playing, a bit aggressive some of them. But they are Paco's pups so... Attacking you. They've all got claws and teeth now, so they try and drink her, and it hurts. What are you doing? Easy. <laughs> You're fearless. You are fearless. Where's my other pups? And here are my pots for the garden. So not fully finished yet. So these are old clay pots that I found lying around. We've never actually used them before. Um, rather than buying new ones. And if I don't break them, hopefully this should do again for many years to come. My only worry about these pots was getting it out, but I'll figure that out if they even grow first. So I've got them all kind of mapped out by what they are. Um, a lot of things would normally be sown directly into the ground. With nice, nice sunshine here now. But you never know, we might get frost in another three or four weeks. And I can't plant anything out in the garden until probably about May. Um, unless it's already grown in the pots a bit. And... Yeah, also some of the seeds that we had were old seeds from previous years. So I don't know if they're still going to grow or if they're just dead seeds. I have a few of the green, of the plastic pots. And then I found these in the shop. Oh, hot. So these are like little pellets that you get. Um, so I got a packet of them. And then when you put them in water, they explode. You might have seen them before. I've never actually seen them. And there's a little hole in it so you put the seed in you dip them into water and then you kind of just feed them like that now i've just watered them some of them are a bit dry but well, first thing i'll be sowing are my potatoes um so i've kind of been looking up how to sow potatoes in no dig garden because they do need soft soil but i will show you when i'm planting them so probably in the next video you might get to see um, it's not in this one, so they're the Dowlin the Tang, so I don't really know why I picked them. Basically, when I was looking at all the ones, they were the ones that kind of grew. These were the ones that said preserved the best, so I think that's the only reason. It was kind of just a wild guess, so hopefully it works out, and we should have lots of potatoes. Okay, me and Pack over here. Fencing again with the digger. It's actually a new bit of a fence. Nearly finished up now all our fencing for this year. Uh, so we have these railway, sleep, railway sleepers set in the ground for the last couple of months. This place is very rocky. So a lot of them stakes you see up there, I had to dig a hole first before I pushed them down. Uh, we used to have a uh, post driver, we had it over here as well, but uh, I found you'd be breaking a lot of stakes. Now they have post drivers over here, not as heavy, and we have one in the Kuma as well, but I never bother using it. Uh, the digger kind of does what I want to do. So this is just the place where there was yard manure. Uh, there you can see there where it was. 
and with the stack bales it's another old shed it was down at the end of the other farm so with some hay in there as well and with the stack round bales there so we just want to put a permanent fence around it because uh, we had electric the French are very fond of the electric so uh, I prefer to have a little bit more security when I'm not here the whole time so that's uh, the fields there we had a bit of rain last night not much uh, there's another lake there so uh, we have to put a fringe gate here a barred wire gate I'll show you them now when we're finished and uh, well you're kind of growing you a bit besides buying gates plus this is the rented farm so I don't want to be putting up uh, gates and all that because if you pop something permanent you can't take it down uh, this is our kind of fencing wagon I made up roughly uh, this unrolls the wire here it's just an old transport box this unrolls the wire you can stack three or four rolls it's not only really simple it's mainly something for holding it all together we keep it all the stuff there and Emily does keep it stocked up she goes through it every now and again when she's going shopping uh, just all electric fence posts some of them are bent so when we go back we straighten them it picks up with the paddle forks um, so we have it kind of all stacked up these are our stakes here <coughs> now these ones I bought here but the ones that's in the ground there are ones I, I made myself uh, they be post they're just posts that are when we're cutting some trees I don't go out specially to cut them if there's trees down and there's things I use them so uh, there they are there <coughs> this bark on them so then your log splitter if any of you would follow the channel our log splitter will split them so I would have got three stakes out of that post and uh, they're not that straight but I straighten them up because when you're this sort of really rocky ground look at the it's all gravel but it's grand in for stacking round bales and things like that so uh, I'll do a bit and uh, then show you we have our chainsaw and all that there our grow bear you name it so if there's a problem with fencing we just pick that up and go um, they're not going around rooting for hammers and this and that plus we have the two uh, jeeps or four befores we have kind of a light fencing thing in them as well if we have a problem so Emily kind of goes one way in the morning Look at the cattle and I go the other and if there's something small we do it there and then. There's no going back. Okay. Okay, we're heading up here to do another little bit of fencing. We have this narp on. It had been rain last night as I said. Green up well since this morning. So we've got a few heifers here as well and then head home and start working on one of the tractors. So we're here looking at a, a Ford 8870. 220 horsepower. That's what I was looking for. But uh, I don't see our man around. It's the boss. Very clean tractor. Good tires. All that. Have to see what he says. That's the way it's on it. Yeah, it's very nice. Record a video, but it's not moving. <laughs> So here we are touching on our New Holland bale trailer. Emily's project. Yeah. 
I'll make the square. I'll make the square bells. You can load them onto this. Yeah. Oh, okay. What? He didn't find it. The yoke for the PTO. I'll show them to. Okay, here's the bale trailer. There's the proprietor. <laughs> he laughing. He happy. What up? Uh, it's New Holland. Behind the Hilux. So uh, we have uh, these magnetic um, lights. The work indicators and all. There's a little remote or an aerial. And uh, you plug in this little aerial here. You plug in that in there and it'll work all your lights the same and you don't have to wire up any trailer boards or anything. And it lasts for 10 hours. So hopefully this works. It's completely uh, independent. It has its own hydraulic tank and all the hydraulics and all. Uh, I didn't see it working, but here's a man face, like myself. Uh, loads it all onto here, and then that flicks up, and then it says pushing along the trailer, and he says it brings 200 bells. So, uh, hopefully, we're hoping to, we do sell, not in the last two years, we do sell uh, square bells. But uh, there's a lot of people uh, wanting them for horses, small places, and they're always looking for square bells. Unless you have the, the right equipment, it's an awful lot of work. So we'll try this. We'll have the bailer, and uh, hopefully we'll get home okay. We just got back from collecting this trailer for picking up the small square bells of hay. Never so glad to see home. We got stopped by the guards because we decided to come back by the motorway. See if the other roads were too windy. But fair enough to them, they gave us an, osco an escort along the motorway till we could take an exit that would bring us on a direct route home. Oh, it's back here now. Hopefully, Emily will get her going. Uh, just wants to go bit of oiling up. He told me he's working. So all we can do now is wait and see. That's our lights all back in the little kit. Uh, you have all the different plugs for different. I think it's normal now on most things. You just plug it in there. And the whole lot's on it. It's from uh, Spirit. So I think they're in Ireland and England as well. I forget what we go for them. We have them about. Four or five, well, no, about four years. And uh, I think they're a great job because we're always pulling crazy loads. So that was it. And um, look what this now one that is. Get it straight up and see if it's working. Uh, that's the. We had a chain on it there as well, so we kind of, the copper didn't mind once we said we were making some attempt, but he told us never to see us again on the roadway out like that. So, that's all. So that's that for this week's episode. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.